Kylian Mbappe is definitely one of the best players in the world. His journey to becoming a top footballer is unbelievable too, with him leading Monaco in an amazing Champions League campaign, to then being the face of PSG alongside superstars like Neymar and Messi, and then also being the captain of his country, France. So how did Kylian Mbappe essentially come out of nowhere to become a future Ballon d'Or winner? Well, let's take a look at the rise of Mbappe's career. Kylian Mbappe was born on December 20th, 1998 in the capital Paris, France, but was specifically raised in the northeastern suburb called Bal Fun fact, he was born in the same year when France won their first World Cup. What a coincidence for Mbappe to be born around the same time as that. Anyways, Mbappe was born into a pretty athletic family with his Algerian mother being a former handball player and his Cameroonian father being a football coach, who is now also Mbappe's agent as well. Also, Kylian's younger brother, Ethan Mbappe, is a professional footballer as well with him also playing for PSG. Safe to say, sports runs through Mbappe's blood. Anyways, Mbappe quickly fell in love with the beautiful game after watching the likes of his idols, Zinedine. Zidane and Cristiano Ronaldo play football, and Mbappe would always love to imitate them in the streets of Paris when he would play football. Kylian eventually wanted to play for a club, so when he was 6 years old, he began his career at AS Bondi, where he would be coached by his father Wilfred. Eventually, with Kylian being seen as highly talented, he moved on to an elite French academy called Clairefontaine, where he would put in numerous impressive performances, having the likes of Real Madrid, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, and Bayern Munich all wanting to sign him. In fact, Real Madrid were the closest because when Mbappe was 11, Madrid invited him to train with their under 12s and also visit the club's facilities, which is where he had the iconic photo with Cristiano Ronaldo when he was younger. Chelsea were also pretty close to swinging Mbappe as well, convincing him to play a game for their youth team against Charlton Athletic. However, regardless of all the top European clubs' interests, Mbappe eventually settled on joining a fellow Ligue 1 club, AS Monaco, who were going through an insane rebuild phase after just being bought out by a Russian billionaire. Monaco also just got promoted into Ligue 1 after winning League 2 the prior season, and they meant to do real damage in the top division of France, with them signing the likes of Ryan of Alcao for 50 million euros, for example. Also, Monaco were completely restructuring their youth setup, which might have swayed Mbappe to join them, since he could be leading the youth team with all the restructuring going on. Anyways, Mbappe was initially brought in to be a mainstay with the Monaco B team. However, his level of skill and maturity got him promoted to the senior squad after just three weeks. And then two months later, on December 2nd, 2015, he made his senior debut against Khan after coming on in the 88th minute, making him Monaco's youngest ever first team player, aged at just 16 years and 347 days old, beating the old record set by a French striker that Mbappe receives a lot of comparisons to, Thierry Henry. Then, two months later, on February 20th, 2016, Mbappe scored his first goal for the club, and it was a stoppage time goal in Ligue 1 against Troyes, where Monaco won 3-1. He scored the goal at the age of 17 years and 62 days old, becoming the youngest first-team goal scorer in Monaco's history, once again dethroning Thierry Henry for holding that record. One month after that, Mbappe signed his first professional contract with Monaco, and it was a three-year deal until the summer of 2019. Let's now move on to the 16-17 season, which was Mbappe's break through and statement campaign for Monaco. That's because in the season, he got 28 goals and 14 assists in a total of 46 games at just 18 years old. During the season, Mbappe had a lot of iconic moments for Monaco as well. For example, he scored his first hat-trick for Monaco in December in a 7-0 win against Rennes in the Coupe de la Ligue round of 16. This was the first hat-trick scored by any Monaco player in the competition since 1997. Then in February 2017, Mbappe got his first Ligue 1 hat-trick of his career in a 5-0 home win over Mets at just 18 years and 2 months old, making him the youngest player to score a league win hat-trick since 2005. Right after that, in the beginning of March, Mbappe scored two goals in a 4-0 win against Nantes, making him the youngest player in the last 30 years to hit 10 goals in the league. This is all fine, but Mbappe made a serious name for himself in the Champions League, where the entire world was taking notice. That's because in the Champions League round 16 first leg game against Manchester City, Mbappe scored Monaco's second goal, becoming the second youngest French scorer in Champions League history, only behind Karim Benzema. However, Monaco lost his game 5-3. It didn't matter though, because in the second leg, Mbappe made the score 1-0 for Monaco at just the 8th minute, and this eventually contributed in a 3-1 win over Man City, helping the club advance to the quarterfinals on away goals. Then in the quarterfinals against Borussia Dortmund, Mbappe won a penalty and scored 2 goals as Monaco won the away leg 3-2, and then in the second leg, Mbappe scored the opening goal as Monaco won and advanced to the Champions League semifinals. A few years back, Monaco was playing in League 2, and now they were going to be in a Champions League semifinal. That's insane! And a huge reason for this is obviously because of killing Mbappe. Sadly though, Monaco were eliminated by Juventus in the semifinals for one on aggregate, but Mbappe did score Monaco's only goal in the tie. So there's that. It's not a sad ending for Monaco and Mbappe this season though, because with Mbappe's impressive performances, Monaco won the Ligue 1 title. A perfect parting gift from Mbappe. You did hear me correctly by the way. I did say parting gift. Over the summer of 2017, Una Emery, the coach of PSG at the time, was talking to Kylian Mbappe, giving him his word that he would play a lot under him. Plus, PSG staff were working hard to convince Mbappe to join their project, like for example, going to Mbappe's house and talking to his parents to sell them the project. This was all to show Mbappe 
Mbappe that PSG really wanted him and were willing to do whatever it takes to sign him. Mbappe saw this and accepted PSG's personal terms. And not long after that, PSG accepted a full transfer of Kylian Mbappe to the capital for a rumored amount of 145 million euros plus 35 million euros in add-ons, making him the most expensive teenager ever. PSG were splashing the cash this summer as well because a month prior to signing Mbappe, they signed Neymar for over 200 million euros, the most expensive player of all time. And now they just signed Mbappe, the second most expensive player of all time. Neymar and Mbappe were set to be PSG's newest dynamic duo, but in hindsight, it really didn't pan out this way. Kylian Mbappe wasted absolutely no time in his first season with PSG because in a total of 46 games, he managed to get 21 goals and 16 assists, meaning he averaged almost a goal contribution in every match he played. In this season, although Neymar might have outshined Mbappe's transfer to PSG, Mbappe definitely outshined Neymar on the pitch, with him definitely becoming the face of PSG in this 17-18 season. It was a funny season for Mbappe and PSG though, because Mbappe's dream club, Real Madrid, who were actually interested in signing Mbappe over the summer, were the ones to knock out PSG in the Champions League round of 16, the tournament that PSG brought Mbappe in to win. Instead, Real Madrid went on to win the entire competition, while Mbappe sat at home and watched. However, Mbappe would have the last laugh, because although he didn't accomplish what he wanted with PSG that season, he did with the French national team. The summer that arrived was the 2018 summer, meaning that it was a World Cup year, and Mbappe received a call up to the 2018 World Cup in Russia. And at this tournament, Mbappe ingrained himself in football history and also cemented himself as one of the best footballers in the next generation after Messi and Ronaldo. Real quick before we talk about that though, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. Anyways, the group stages were rather quiet for Mbappe in France, with Mbappe only scoring the lone goal against Peru. However, Mbappe went crazy and truly showed off his world class ability in the knockout rounds. In the round 16 against Argentina, Mbappe was the man of the match. Mbappe went on an early run in the game to win an early penalty for France, a run that all of us football fans would remember like it's in the back of our brains. Then, while the game was still 2 2, Mbappe scored an amazing goal to give his country the lead and then scored another to double down on their lead in just four minutes. Eventually, these couple of goals from Mbappe helped France beat Argentina in a thrilling 4 3 game. This game might have been one of the first ones to show that Mbappe was one of the chosen ones to be the face of football for the next generation. It doesn't stop there though because in the World Cup final against Croatia, Mbappe scored the fourth and final goal for France, becoming the second teenager to score in a World Cup final only after Pelé, and this helped France beat Croatia 4-2, meaning that they've won their second ever World Cup. With these amazing knockout performances, Mbappe went on to win the FIFA World Cup Best Young Player Award, and this is something that Mbappe definitely deserved. Let's move on to the 18-19 season, where Mbappe's stats skyrocketed from his previous seasons of football. In a total of 43 games, he managed to get 39 goals and 17 assists, meaning he got 13 more goal contributions than games played that season. Ridiculous from Mbappe, not gonna lie. And when Neymar continuously being ridiculed by injuries, Mbappe only continued to cement himself as the face of PSG. However, PSG brought in Mbappe to help them win the Champions League, and this season was another failure in that aspect, despite Mbappe having 9 gold contributions in 8 UCL games. Basically, in the round 16 against Manchester United, a beatable team, PSG choked at home in France, giving up a last minute penalty, which Marcus Rashford buried to knock PSG out of the competition. Regardless on a personal level for Mbappe, it was still successful, since PSG ended up winning Ligue 1, like always, and also that Mbappe won the Ligue 1 Player of the Year award, and also the Ligue 1 Golden Boot, with him backing 33 goals in Ligue 1 alone. Now let's go to the 19-20 season, where Mbappe thrived once again on a personal level, despite the coronavirus plaguing the world. That's because in 37 games in total, Mbappe managed to get 30 goals and 18 assists. Pichy also had a successful domestic campaign, with the club winning Ligue 1 like always, and also winning the Coupe de France and also the Coupe de la Ligue. However, in the Champions League, it was delayed because of COVID-19. Then when it resumed, it was in a special NBA bubble style format in Portugal, where Pichy were set to take on Atalanta. However, even though Mbappe showed in the Champions League campaign prior to this knockout style tournament, he honestly failed to show up. Yes, he came through with an assist against Atalanta in the quarterfinals and helped PSG beat them 2-1, but that's honestly it. That's because in the semifinals against RB Leipzig, he registered no goal contributions despite PSG winning 3-0, and then in the Champions League final against Bayern Munich, when PSG needed Mbappe most, he vanished, and Bayern beat PSG 1-0, helping them win the competition instead. This was PSG's chance to win the Champions League for the first time, and it was the easiest time to win it since the two-legged system was gone. However, PSG choked again, and Mbappe was at some fault for that. Killian didn't dwell on this though, because in the next 2021 season, Mbappe had his best ever personal stats. In a total of 47 games for the club, he registered 42 goals and got 11 assists, meaning that this was the first time Mbappe got 40 plus goals in a single season. However, for PSG, this season was still considered a failure. They actually, for once, didn't win Ligue 1, meaning that this was the first time in Mbappe's career that he didn't win the league. However, Mbappe still ended the season with the Ligue 1 Player of the Year award and also got featured in the team of the season. Also, PSG were actually cooking in the Champions League for a bit. In the round 16 game against Barcelona, Mbappe absolutely destroyed them, with him getting 3 goals in the first leg and then a singular goal in the second leg, helping PSG win 5-2 on aggregate. Then against
against Bayern Munich in the quarterfinals, the club that won the Champions League against them last season, and Bobby scored two decisive goals in the first leg to help PSG progress to the semis on away goals. Sadly though, Mbappe injured his calf and missed out on the second leg of the semifinals against Man City, where PSG eventually lost 4-1 on aggregate, meaning PSG have gone yet another season without winning the Champions League. Now it was time for the 2020 Euros, since they were delayed by a year because of COVID-19. Thanks China. France were put in a group of death with Germany, Hungary, and Portugal. However, thanks to France's star power, they managed to go undefeated and also managed to top the group. But Mbappe played a little role in that, only providing one assist in the three group stage games. Then in round 16, Mbappe became the reason for France's downfall. That's because after a super thrilling 3-3 match, the game was sent to penalties. And then everybody made their penalties until Mbappe stepped up. That's because when Mbappe took his pen, it was saved by Summer, meaning that the world champions France were knocked out by Switzerland in the round 16. This was an absolute failure of a tournament from France, and definitely for killing Mbappe as well. Because not only did he not score a single goal at the Euro 2020 tournament, but he was the main reason why France were even knocked out of it. Things just weren't looking good for the French star boy. However, Mbappe didn't let his poor summer define it, because in the next 21-22 season, Mbappe had his best personal stats ever. In a total of 46 games, he managed to get 39 goals and 26 assists, meaning he got almost 20 more goal contributions than games played that season. Mbappe was on some demon time it for real. Now like always, Mbappe got some personal records for PSG, like for example, becoming the first player to finish as both the top goal scorer and the top assist provider in league with history. However, PSG season was still a failure, even though they did win league good again, something they usually do. That's because in the Champions League, they fumbled the bag yet again. Mbappe was carrying the French club as well, with him getting a goal contribution in every match they played. However, again in the round 16 against Real Madrid, they were knocked out. Mbappe did his part by scoring the lone goal in the first leg to beat Madrid 1-0, and even scored the second goal against Madrid in the second leg to put PSG 2-0 up. However, Real Madrid had a miraculous comeback and scored 3 goals, knocking PSG out of the competition. So yeah, for PSG, it was yet again another failure. But Mbappe did avenge himself with France this season. That's because in October, the Nations League finals were taking place, and Mbappe played a significant part in France's triumph, bouncing back from his Euro 2020 failure. In the semi-finals against Belgium, France won 3-2, and it was thanks to Mbappe's one goal and one assist that this occurred. Then in the final against Spain, France won 2-1, and this was all because of Mbappe, since he got the goal and assist in this match, which then helped France win their first ever Nations League. So the season was an L for PSG, but it was a W for France and Mbappe. However, was it an L for PSG? That's because right before the season was ending, Mbappe was set to leave the club. He was only going to have one year left on his contract, and he wasn't planning on signing his extension. Plus, with Real Madrid continuously knocking on the door, putting in offers left and right, it was only going to be a matter of time until PSG accepted one of them. However, even though everything was leading towards Mbappe leaving the club, he didn't. Why? That's because PSG offered Mbappe an astronomical amount of power and money, including a monthly wage of 4 million pounds, making him the highest paid player in the world at the time, before Saudi Arabia started taking over football, and also giving him responsibilities like who the club should sign, which positions he could play, etc. This brought Mbappe a lot of hate, saying that he's the most selfish person in football, and how can someone with such a high ego get this much power? But hey, when you're offered that much, you take it. Plus, he's one of the best players in the world. I personally believe that this offer is fair game. Anyways, like I alluded to, with an offer like this, Mbappe accepted his contract extension all the way up until 2024, even though the shirt says 2025. We'll get to that soon, trust me. Let's now move on to the 22-23 season. Another great season for killing Mbappe, obviously. That's because in 43 games, Mbappe managed to get 41 goals and 10 assists, yet again breaking the 40 plus goals in a single season. During this season as well, Mbappe became PSG's all-time top goal scorer when he scored in a 4-2 win over Nantes, dethroning Cavani with Mbappe's 201st goal for the club. Mbappe then finished off the season as the top scorer for the fifth consecutive campaign, winning the League Ud Player of the Year award for the fourth consecutive time, and also with PSG winning their 11th League Ud title. However, like you all know, PSG have yet again failed when it comes to the Champions League, since they got knocked out by Bayern Munich in the round 16 yet again. Anyways, me and you, I bet we're both getting tired of hearing how many times PSG have failed to win the Champions League, right? So let's do something different. Let's talk about a competition that Mbappe absolutely dominated, the 2022 World Cup. Now, France were going into this tournament as one of the favorites, as they did win the previous World Cup in 2018. However, they had a lot of pressure on them, like overcoming the World Cup curse, for example. However, with Mbappe going on a rampage, they had no problem in doing that. That's because France easily topped their group at the World Cup, with Mbappe putting a great shift in, with him scoring and assisting against Australia in a 4-1 win, and also him scoring the two decisive goals against Denmark in a 2-1 win. Then, in the knockout rounds of the tournament, he played fairly well. In the round 16 against Poland, Mbappe played a part in every single goal in the 3-1 win, getting two goals and one assist. Then, France made it back to the World Cup final, where they were looking to win back-to-back -back World Cup trophies, something only Brazil had done before. And they were actually really close to doing it too. It didn't initially look that way though, with Argentina winning the majority of the game 2-0. However, when France won a penalty towards the end of the game, Mbappe scored it to bring the game within one. Then, around 2 
minutes later, Mbappe got the ball again and scored a cracking volley, drawing the game to everybody's surprise. Then in extra time, while France were down 3-2, they were given another fair penalty, in which Mbappe absolutely buried, becoming the first man to score a hat-trick in the World Cup final since Joff Hurst for England in 1966. Also, he became the outright top goal scorer in World Cup finals with four goals. Not bad for someone only in his mid-20s. Sadly though, despite Mbappe's awesome performance, France lost in the penalty shootout, meaning that Messi and Argentina won the World Cup, and France were going to go back to back. On the bright side though, at least Mbappe won the golden boot with a total of eight goals, right? Yeah, he didn't care too much about winning that award, let's be real. The reason I'm mentioning the 2022 World Cup though, despite France not winning it, is that Mbappe showed in this tournament that he is easily a top three player in the world, and he's ready to show that at the club level as well and move to one of the biggest leagues. Basically, he's finally ready for a move to Real Madrid. And Mbappe thinks so as well, because in June of 2023, he released an official statement saying that he's not going to renew his contract with PSG, which was actually set to expire in 2024 and not 2025. The reason the 2025 shirt was there at his contract extension was because Mbappe had a clause in his contract where he could extend it, and Nasser al khalifi the owner of PSG, was given reason to believe that he would extend it. However, Mbappe has said that he never had any intention of signing that contract extension, and he wants to play out the final 23-24 season with PSG and move on to a different club in the summer of 2024, in which we all know is going to be Real Madrid. However, with this, PSG have exiled Kylian Mbappe, stating that if he wants to play for the club, he has to sign that extension, or else he'll be banished from the squad until his contract runs out. And so far, the banishment is happening, because Mbappe wasn't allowed to go on the preseason tour in Asia, and has been training separately from the main group of players at the club. He was also offered the chance to sign for Al Hilal for one season for $775 million, but he wasn't interested and would rather stay banished at PSG's grounds. So yeah, at the time of me recording this, nobody knows what's actually going to happen to Kylian Mbappe. However, I'm sure in due time, Kylian Mbappe will finally be killing it for Real Madrid, and maybe he'll finally win a Champions League and also a Ballon d'Or to truly cement himself as one of the footballing greats. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to learn more about one of the most clutch footballers in history, Divock Origi, you definitely want to check out this video right here, you won't regret it.